Well, there's uh, obviously jumping on the why portion of your question, there's uh, various factors, uh, global recessions and headwinds playing out into Indonesia, trade routes disrupted, but also sectoral, sectoral challenges in specific sectors, if you think of construction, textiles and other sectors, but as well as specific company challenges, right? So everything is playing out. But the point is, before COVID, from the data that we looked at, 9% we would qualify as distressed of the listed companies above $50 million. And that number now is trending to 14%. So actually, the distress bucket is growing. And, and, and those factors are playing out, including also uh, mostly companies that overextended their debt load. And we saw that one of the biggest drivers into distress for these companies is, is simply they took on too much debt, obviously, and, 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 and interest rates have boomed up, even though they are, they are heading downwards. But that weight of debt is just simply too much for the, for the profitability of the business. So that's a growing pool. But at the same time, the, the larger right, so, bucket of healthy companies right. are actually getting healthier. So it's, it's kind of di a polarization of performance. Okay. Or sort of a dichotomy there, I understand. Alex, if you could uh, think back 16 years, and I've been telling folks how we have to remember that Indonesia, yes, is a democracy, but it's still a relatively young and very messy one. In effect, it's only since 2008 when Suharto felt that it has become a democracy. As part of that transition over the last 16 years, though, uh, we've seen the withdrawal of military from business, which is largely seen as a good thing. I mean, for a number of reasons, right? Diplomatically, it's, uh, you know, uh, we don't have the risk of misallocation of resources. If you want to be polite about it, if you want to be less polite, you can say that, look, I mean, generals may know how to run a division, but they don't necessarily know how to run a, a, a company, right? Have things necessarily improved in terms of corporate governance or running businesses in Indonesia since the military was, uh, uh, was extracted, so to speak? Yeah, let's, <clears throat> sorry. let's not forget that uh, military pulling out of business is one, one underlying factor that we've observed. But even more importantly, if you go back in time, it's really military pulling out of politics. You might remember that military in Indonesia had an allocation in parliament, a permanent allocation of seats. So the, the withdrawal of military from politics and then in combination, the withdrawal, the gradual withdrawal of military from business has been a steady trend, right? And yes, I would say, I mean, if we look at the long period and the long haul, Indonesian corporate governance has certainly improved. And one of the factors that has uh, driven this improvement is the continued uh, listing of companies in the stock market and the pervasiveness of you know, global capital markets forcing a lot of the list codes particularly uh, as they're looking for uh, offshore capital to conform to norms. Now, uh, that said, there is still a way to go of corporate governance in terms of international standards for many of the companies in Indonesia.